So all of you people who are willing to go to any country of your choice, whether it is the US, Canada, UK, Ireland, New Zealand, whatever you are applying to, Australia or even Germany, most of the universities in these countries do have a spring term. And what that spring term means is that you get to go in January of well, in this case, 2023, right? So if you are willing to go ahead with your journey to study overseas in January of 2023, this is the exact day by day schedule that you should be following to ensure that you are prepared and everything happens in time. You don't have to worry about, oh, I missed out on that. I missed out on this. So this is what we'll be showing you in this video right here. I'm going to take you to wamgrad.com. And you, the first thing you will see on my screen is that we have this messaging button over here. It's a P2P messaging. It's a chat so that people can chat with each other. We have been in the process of building that, but it's not yet finished. So since I'm a staff member, I'm able to see this. You guys will not be able to see this just yet, but in a couple of days, you guys will be able to see this and you'll be able to chat with your friends or you'll be able to chat with new people that you meet on wamgrad.com. Okay, I think that's pretty exciting. I just wanted to let you know about that. And uh, let's talk about the exact timeline now. We'll go into the resources and the articles in that case. And then finally, we'll type in timeline. Once you type in timeline, you come across this one, timeline for applying to US universities, the spring session. Make sure that you open the spring one and not the fall one, since this video is about spring. Okay, and this is the exact timeline in this image. This is explained underneath it, but I'm going to explain it for you guys over here directly in this video. Of course, I'll include the link to this page so that you guys can actually go ahead and bookmark it for future purposes. Okay, now moving on to the actual schedule. What do you have to do? When do you have to start? So the schedule essentially starts somewhere around February of 2022. Okay, uh, I know that it's past. We are making this in March, but again, you, you, you basically can start right now as well. So guys, the first thing, the very first thing that you should be doing right now is you should be preparing for your standardized tests, okay? So you start preparing for the GRE, TOEFL, GMAT, ALTS, SATs, ACTs, whatever you are taking, depending on who you are, what you're doing, of course, these tests can be different, right? So you have to make sure that you are well prepared, you're preparing for these tests, all right? And this is the right time to start, okay? Even if you miss February, it doesn't matter. You can start right now. You're not too late. Trust me, you can do this. Okay, so you start preparing for your tests and essentially, you know, and this red line over here that you see, the red one is essentially the perks of working with us. Just in case some of you guys are thinking of working with us for the process, this is what we'll be doing right now. Not only will, uh, of course, since you are going to be preparing for the TOEFL or the GRE or whatever the test that you're going to be taking, we're going to be focusing on your continuous profile improvement guidance. We're going to be helping you improve your profile because simply you have a lot of time right now, right? There's a couple of months. So if you're enrolling in the complete application help service with us, we would like to actually make sure that you're not wasting even a single minute. Okay. So that's what we will be doing over here. Now, the next step over here is in parallel, March and April itself, you know, in parallel itself, you start, not only are you preparing for the GRE and TOEFL now, but you also have to start working on your SOPs and LORs. This is important if you are doing the process yourself and not with anyone else. For instance, if you're doing it with us, Ivy League graduates will be directly working on your drafts from scratch using your inputs and making sure that, you know, they are unplagiarized and grammatically correct and they are having a lot of substance. Okay. And if you require any changes, they're free. But similarly, if you're doing it for your, from your end, for the first time, it can be a little bit daunting at first and trust me, it can take about one to two months to get to the final version of your SOP that you personally like. LORs also, it can take a little bit for you guys to actually understand what you have to write, what you don't have to write, because again, there has to be a fine line. You cannot be too modest either, but you cannot also be too extravagant with it, right? But yeah, the, the point of it is that if your recommenders want you to write the LORs and you're anyway writing your SOPs, right, and these have to be different for each and every university, well, you have to make sure that by March or April, you are reaching at least some finalized version of it. Now, I'm not saying 100% finalized, but 90, 99% it should be good enough, okay? The next thing, by May 22, guys, the next important thing over here, by May 22 or maximum by June 22, what you want to do is you want to get over with these standardized tests, the GRE, TOEFL, GMAT, SAT, ACT, whatever you're taking, right? You want to finish them off by May or June maximum. June is the maximum month, I would say, over here. Don't extend it after that, okay? Because you want to be ready and prepared for your applications after that, okay? So let's say that you have finished off these things and you are now starting the shortlist. So by June also, you want to finish off your shortlist of universities, not only these tests, okay? So, you know, by the end of June, you should have at least your test scores and your shortlist in your hands. The shortlisting is the most important part of the process. If you choose the wrong universities, you're wasting your time, 
okay? And people don't emphasize on this enough, but I can tell you, choosing the right set of universities is the most paramount step in your journey over here. So you choose the right universities, and then from there you start application submission, okay? You start with application submission. So May through October, for those of you who have finished the, these things earlier, you can even start applying in May, June as well. Some universities open up the portals, you know, depending on who you are, what you're going for. MBA universities open them up way earlier than MS universities, right? Similar for bachelors also. Bachelors universities do open them early as well in some cases, okay? And of course, you know, if it's PhDs, you have to be early in most cases. There's really no exception over there, right? So May through October, you are basically going to be involved in not only your tests and shortlisting and finalizing your SOPs and LOAs, you also have to go ahead and apply to the universities very important step guys applying not only involves just applying you have to get your transcripts you have to make sure that everything is you know in the right format etc etc right and then you have to make sure that you are applying and making sure that you are not really basically you know sending in bad applications just in a hurry so you have to have this amount of time you have to have three four months for that at least okay so let's say even if you finish your test by june and you have your shortest by june july august september you should be applying and then from september itself you will see admits start to roll in okay so september october and november you'll start receiving the admission letters from the universities okay i would not say that these are the times that you should be leaving out for the end or you should be applying for the spring session i know a lot of people do that and they do get the admits as well but it's always better to apply early for the best kind of funding and the best kind of admits I've seen that, it's in my experience. Again, if you come to me and you say in October also that I want to apply to Spring 23, I'm going to be like, no problem. We will be happy to help you apply. But at the end of the day, will you get the maximum scholarships? The answer is no. Because, simply because, you are applying a little bit late than other applicants. So yes, you may still get some scholarship, but it cannot compare to someone who actually applied two months before you. So please keep that in mind, okay? And finally, once you have the admission letter in your hands by November 2022, between November and December, what you are going to be doing is you are going to be receiving your I-20 or the acceptance letter from the university, depending on which country you are going to write. It, for Canada in itself, you know, it's it's the acceptance letter. They give you the LOA, it's called the letter of acceptance. For US, it's I-20, similar for every other country, they have a similar acceptance letter mostly. And with that, you can actually go ahead and apply for your visa. So that's the most important part now. You have to ace your visa. You don't get a lot of time. For instance, fall applicants, they get a lot of time to, uh, to work on their visa. You guys, you get very little time, about one, one and a half months. Because in January, you have to fly out. So January, you're flying out of the country. You're moving on to your new country now for, for your education overseas, of course. But before that, you want to make sure that everything is done in these timelines only because these will actually protect you. You won't ever be late at whatever you're doing in the process. Okay, I hope this helps. If you need our help, if you want us to actually help you in the process, you can take a look at the services section on the Grad website. The complete application help in general covers everything till you get the admits and the scholarship. But again, it depends. If you just want a la carte services, you just want help with shortlisting, you can take a look at this one. Just want help with the SOPs using the Ivy League graduates that we have, you can take a look at this one, et cetera, et cetera. It works in a similar way. I think you get the point. But either way, a lot of exciting things coming up. This chat option is coming up. We are very, very excited for the future and we hope to see you next time as well. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel for quicker updates and that you're following me on Instagram for a lot more smaller content that I don't really put out on YouTube. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye and take care for now. Bye.